Hello. So I was just sitting here wondering what to do with my day. I feel vaguely creative, but also really low energy levels. And then suddenly Rolly came in, sat on my table, looked at me, started rubbing his face into my pencils. And made me think maybe I should be a bit creative today. So I'm gonna get my big sketchbook out. I'm gonna get some drawing prompts. This is what I do when I'm not feeling particularly like overly enthusiastic about making something, about creating something. So let's do it. Hello, if you're new here, by the way, my name's Emma. I'm an illustrator based in Sheffield and these are my daily-ish vlogs. I want to make something. This is what I do. And I picked this up from the people at the Good Ship Illustration. They do this in their art clubs over on Instagram whenever they do them. They tell you to pick some ornaments from around the house, drawing from life, not from pictures. Because your brain uses, it, your, your brain works in a diff different way when it's working from 3D than when it's working from pictures. Pictures are great, but um, your brain doesn't have to convert pictures into a flat object on the page uh, so it's already done for you so your brain's not working as much you don't get as much from working from a picture I think uh, so they say get ornaments from around the house and draw them in time sketch time sketches uh, so that's what I do so this is why I've got this little cabinet down here that you saw before I uh, collect little knickknacks either from my past or I go to the charity shop um, and I've just chosen a few today and it's a really good task. It's a good task on its own, even if that's all you do, which is probably what I'm going to do today, I think. But this is it. You never know. So it's a good warm up task as well. If you're not really feeling like up to making something big or like spend or anything in particular, uh, but you want to create, this is a good way to get something down but also I often find that once I do like half an hour or an hour of this 
I want to keep going. So it might just spark some ideas for you. So for example, this seagull, hold on. I got this guy from a charity shop and I did the same thing with this seagull and I just drew it as it was and then I imagined it in different situations, different scenarios. So like level one of this task is just draw the thing. Draw the thing, turn it round, draw it from that side, turn it round, draw it from that side, draw it from above, draw it with something else next to it, draw it as it is. And then the next kind of part of the task, if you want to move on from it, is to imagine that thing in other situations. So especially if it's something with a face, uh, it can re be really good to help you practice characters. Even if this is never going to be a character for you, uh, you know, draw this hanging from a tree, uh, scared, doing a forward roll, riding a bike, whatever. Uh, and even if you're never going to use it as a character, it's a good way to get your muscle memory up on how do I make something hang from a tree? How do I make it ride a bike? How do I get it look to look looking scared? So then when you do it for real, uh, with a with a real life character, you've, you've already done the hard kind of foundation work. But I did it with this guy uh, a few months ago. I drew it as it was, then drew it in different situations. And the ideas that got going, once I got once I got started, so I was just, just as my hand was moving, I had no intentions of making it a beautiful piece or whatever, just just use different materials, make it scribbly, make it big, whatever. And this guy actually sparked off so many ideas. So I have this little notepad and I keep this with me where I go. And whenever I have an idea for something, I'll pop it in here. And that's what I did with this. And this ended up being the character, well, not this, but... um kind of this. This is this is a different thing. This is one of the things that I was going to enter for the picture hooks competition, but it's like that seagull basically uh, in a different story is a story that I've already written. Uh, and I submitted that to the open submissions for Rocket Bird Books. Um, and I'm going to have it in my portfolio. It's already in my portfolio. And it's it's a it's a full book idea now. And it came from just scribbling around with things like this. It doesn't always happen like that. I think the key is in this exercise, don't put pressure on yourself for it to do anything other than just get you moving a pencil or whatever on some paper. Uh, you can even do a collage if you want to. However you work, it's good, just kind of brainless practice. Um, but yeah, it just shows that, that this exercise can lead to other things. Although I think the key to getting the most out of it is to not put pressure on yourself for it to have to lead to anything. Um, so I've got these two little figures. These were, these, these have been knocking around my family house since I was little. And I think they have been around since before I was born. Apparently they came out of crackers, Christmas crackers, they're little ceramic um, ornaments. And there's loads of different animals. That's a hippo. I think this is an orangutan. Although I only really get that by the colour and the hands. Uh, so I've picked those. I've also got this that I picked up in a charity shop, which is a tiny little milk jug in the shape of a cow. And it's actually got a section for milk. And when you pour it, it comes out of its mouth, which is kind of cute. I've never used it for that. Uh, so I'm going to draw that, see what comes of it. And... I've also got the ships in bottles. My nana had a ship in a bottle when I was a kid and it was always, it's like a big memory for me, even though it's probably just like this incidental thing that she probably picked up in a charity shop herself. Um, and I don't know what happened to that original, that original ship in a bottle, but um, I've got my own. This one is from a charity shop and the ship's not actually stuck down anymore. Uh, but I've got some charity shops near me and for a few kind of visits in a row there were every time I went in there seemed to be another ship in a bottle so I've got a small collection of my own now there are four and I think they all came from the same people because um they're all kind of painted in the same colors and the base is very similar on each of them they've all got this most of them have got this little like rope detail around there 
and they all came from the same area of Sheffield <laughs> so I'm assuming they're from the same collection uh, but yeah I've got this out to draw as well just see what happens the other day uh, I hosted a live drawing session for my patrons we do similar things uh, every month we meet on zoom and we do a similar thing there so it, I've, I've set up a a drawing club called uh, the Scribbles Allowed Drawing Club and it's basically we're going to do time sketching it's not exactly the same as this but uh, we'll draw draw to a theme for about 40 minutes and last the last one was bikes and I got my inks out for the bikes um, and I really enjoyed I really enjoyed using the ink so I got some inks done I, I use other things as well but the inks is, are what really stuck in my mind um, I can separate this page. Yeah, I like the way they turned out. And I actually used sticks. So rather than using a dip pen, um, I've got a bunch of sticks that I've collected just from roundabout. Uh, there are a couple of bamboo dip pens in there actually as well. But, you know, just normal sticks from the woods. And these are good for loosening you up because you can't be precise and exact with a stick because stick and ink creates inexact lines. So you can see it's good when you don't want to get caught up in the detail or when you think you might get frustrated because you might not be able to capture the detail. Uh, so you can see the uneven lines that have happened around the tyre. They're just a little bit less formal than a dip pen so that's a good good way of good way of approaching this task as well because you know those days well like I'm having one today where you don't feel like your brain is up to anything in particular for me anyway those days are the days that I would probably be really hard on myself if something didn't turn out looking brilliant uh, you know if I sat down and tried to do a finished piece when I'm feeling like this I would probably go into a bit of a downward spiral um, of my work's not good enough, it's really rubbish, uh, I hate what I make, um, nothing, nothing looks amazing. But if you approach it with a playful ma manner, which is why I love time sketches, uh, you know, just use any materials. This is another one that I did on my drawing, uh, my drawing Zoom with my patrons. Um, just a quick scribble. And I went over it in pen. That was in a dip pen, I think. Yeah, that was with a dip pen. Um, so a pen sticks a dip pen. I think that was a Posca marker. And I really love this. This is my favourite one from the whole session. I approached it playfully. I didn't want it to look super neat. I only had five minutes to do this one anyway. Um, and I didn't want it to look super neat. So I approached it with big chunky materials. So my paint sticks, which... Do I have any out? They're here. So they're basically big chunky. They're almost like a lipstick type thing. With paints in them. So you can't get a fine detail on those. So I've got my paint sticks out. Um, and then I did a few like sweeping details in the dip pen. But like, you know, nothing major. Um, and I only had five minutes to do it anyway, so I couldn't spend a long time sitting thinking about it. Uh, so I think anyway, basically I've got on a, I've got off on a tangent. I think that's that's the mindset I'm going to approach with this. I'm going to get my inks. I'm going to use sticks. And first things first, rather than trying to add any colour, I'm just going to go black and white and uh, do line drawings, but with an, with sticks instead of a dip pen. I've just realised as well. I've also got this old camera, which I picked up from home. Another thing that was just knocking around the garage. Um, so I might add that to my list of... I might add that to my pile of objects to use. Oh, that, you know, that brings back memories looking through a viewfinder. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's amazing just the little things that can take you right back. Anyway, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we get on with. Uh, I'm going to prop you up so you can see what I'm doing and probably put you on a time lapse. 
and I'll work until maybe I need another cup of tea. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm not going to formally time myself, but I'm going to work quickly. I'm not going to worry about filling in details. I'm just going to I'm just going to work quickly and see what goes on. If I find that I am getting caught up on the detail, I might introduce an actual timer. So maybe I'll spend three minutes on each one. Maximum. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, let's go. while I just go and get my washing in because it's just started raining. The joys of working from home, hey?
well that did not turn out the way I thought it was going to but I really enjoyed the process I enjoyed letting let it just go where it was going um it seems to have opened up bits in my brain that needed opening up so let me show you anyway I'll turn you around so first things first right, this is today a bit of ink work of some ornaments and things I think because I had to take a break to go and bring my washing in it kind of changed my brain's tack a little bit so when I came back I thought hey I'm just going to make some blobs I vaguely remember doing things like this when I was in the junior school where you'd make you put some blobs on a page you turn it over then you'd make it into a butterfly I vaguely remember that um so yeah these I made this one into a little ghost just because I thought it looked cute and then this one I mean I don't know what you see but I see some kind of animal skull so there's the eyes and then these are the teeth don't know what that says about me don't psychoanalyze me guys but then i went on to a i thought it was a good way actually of killing the white in the page because i do find that sometimes when i'm faced with just a blank white page it's like oh my god what am i gonna do so it, it felt playful to be doing this so I decided to get some colours out. So I've got these liquid watercolours that I was using, um, which are a bit more kind of less intense. And I thought they'd work well as backgrounds. So I blobbed some colour in the backgrounds. And then I've went over them in pen and pencil. So this one was just observational sketching as well, getting back to drawing these things. But then I thought I'm going to work with the blobs and go on an Easter theme. These looked like bunnies. I think I over, I think I pushed this too far by adding too much pen work down here, but a ballerina bunny. And this one, I just kept it simple by making a face. Can you see a bunny in there? I can. A bunny with 10,000 toes. <laughs> and then I purposefully made some blobs that wouldn't join together so that I could just let my imagination run wild and make these into things. So whatever my brain thought they looked like. So I've got a dog, person, jellyfish. That's an earring from the person. Dragon. Uh, alien creature. Fish. Baby chameleon. Person's face. Caterpillar. Two sheep. A cat, another fish, like a seagull bird thing. Oh, I haven't done one there. Oh, that can be part of the bird. Uh, elephant, stingray, elephant, cat, cat, and like a dandelion thing. And I really enjoyed this one more than any of them because it made my brain look at the blobs and think, what could this be? Rather than me thinking, what am I going to draw? I like I was working with what I had. Um yeah, and it feels good. <laughs> So that's what I ended up with today. And to be honest, I think that's where it's going to stay today. I'm not feeling very well, guys, and I don't know what it is. But anyway, because of that, I'm going to chill and not push, not push the work. Um, I have got work I need to be getting on with, but I work for myself. I set my time scales. And if you can't be nice to yourself when you're not feeling very well, I mean, when can you? It's one of the little joys about being your own boss. That you actually have a boss that cares about your well-being. Moi. So yeah, I'm going to leave this video here. Thanks so much for joining me. And if you're interested in the sound of my monthly drawing sessions over on Patreon, you're very welcome to join. It's available to all paying patrons from my £1 tiers and above. I've kept the price low on purpose because... I know we're all struggling and I don't think that drawing sessions and meeting up on Zoom to do arty things should 
be for people who've got a bunch of disposable income. So I've kept the price as low as possible. Um, Patreon's really flexible. You can stay for one month or you can keep your membership rolling over. It's up to you. Um, but I'll pop the details here. So it's patreon.com forward slash Emma Wood. Rude. It's uh, patreon.com forward slash Emma Woodthorpe. I'll pop the links in the video description as well. And you're welcome to come and join along for the next one. The next one will be in April if you're watching this live. If you're not watching this live, then um, just check my website to find out when the next one is going to be. Um, obviously, no obligation. Uh, but yeah, I am going to leave this video here now and I will catch you in the next one. So until then, bye.